Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report. We're joined by Tim Alexander. Bottom of the hour, we're going to have Chris Harris. And if you're listening in the last two hours of Open Line Special, you have to understand that uh, uh, this morning I have been overwhelmed by waves of grief. And our grief not just the, uh, that exceeds even the horror of the death of my parents or relatives or, or friend, close friends, but a grief that's orders of magnitude beyond and a grief that overwhelms me. Not with the grief of a man, but the grief of, of literally the gift that God's given me to have the grief and, the, and the, of the terror of what's coming upon the face of the earth. And, uh, you know, I can tell you right now, when you see the stock market teetering, when you can see Japan about to blow up with Fukushima, when you can see all these things happening, I'm not a negative person, but an optimist is someone, as Jesus said, you know, when the prophets were in the back of the cave, covered with sackcloth and ashes, they knew that their God can get them through it, but there had to be a lot of repentance and a lot of obedience in order for us to get through it, and that's not happening so far. And the latest thing that I think makes me particularly grieve is not only the bill today, they're trying to pass through Congress to see if they can stop sex-selected abortion when all abortion is selective, and the other is when the conservative right votes for a flip-flop Mormon who, by the way, the Mormons are more conservative than most Christians, believe it or not, in terms of pro-life. In order to get to abortion, you have to go through the, the, the stake bishop, and then you have to go through the council of the 70s to even approve it, and they're very stringent. So I can tell you, having worked and took care of Mormons, that the fact that they have this flip-flop candidate that's pro-gay marriage and pro-abortion is an obscenity for even the Mormon church. And so when he says he's changed, I want to see a real repentance. I want to see some real changes because I'm going to support Tom Heffling for president. We posted that up the other day when we had Greg Jackson on. And Tom will be on the program regularly before the election because I don't care how many votes he gets. He's going to get my vote because I can't stomach the idea of voting for either pro-abortion candidate or one who doesn't stand up for the sanctity of life or the sanctity of a normal family. Uh, it just makes me ill to think that the Christian right thinks, and we know this already, even the astrologers and the demonic culture conjurers of of uh, of darkness knows when they had their convention this last week the astrologers all said oh yeah the signs of the stars says Obama will get in but it'll be a squeaker well I can tell you spiritually I've been having visions for months that we will have an election where if the timeline's not changed from our current pathway and it can be changed by repentance just like Nineveh we're heading toward an election where where Obama will win again by a squeaker they'll dispute the vote until the end of November and then we'll be stuck with legal challenges in the first two years of his so-called presidency, and he will be the one to partition the state of Israel and sanctify the Temple Mount and consider the well, world actually, hero. The Bible, the, the Bible code says that uh, Romney will be elected, but uh, I don't. Uh, uh, a and, lot and, of unless, the Bible code depends on who does the interpreting. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. Not only that, the thing is, the Bible code. He personally believes in the white, co the white horse prophecy that was given by Joseph Smith that a lot of Mormons don't agree with, but a lot of the higher level ones do that he thinks he's the one to ride the white horse and save the American Constitution when it hangs by a thread, which Joseph Smith put out, one of the, the literally the founder of the Mormon Church. None of these guys are going to save us. These are, uh, yeah. these are all these are de Illuminati satanic shrills. Yeah, I, I, they're, they're satanic. They're satanic. Well, he's a, whoever is the president, this is a thus saith the Lord, it's not even open for my dispute or anybody else's. Whoever is the president after this next election will be Thus saith the Lord, the false prophet. Because the mark of the beast can only be pulled by one superpower, and that's America. I've actually been inside the array at Falcon, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base. That new super database of 3 million square feet in northern Utah is just another node of this giant database that they're building to have, you know, not terabytes of information. We're talking about, you know, Google bytes. Information that's so massive with the data architecture for every individual in the first and second world, and people don't understand. They're getting ready to collapse the world economy toward a G20 world biometric currency. They have it right in Obama healthcare. We talked about this last week with Mike Velarde, who's a former IRS agent and a believer. We're there. This is not Dr. Deagle's delusion, like, oh my gosh, he's so delusional, he's saying these things. We have a chorus, literally a choir of Tim Alexander, Mike Velarde, and thousands of other researchers now that are saying, even Donald Trump, with his funny combed hair, he stands there with Romney and says, you know, I don't believe the birth certificate was valid, and Romney still smirks and rolls his eyes, even for a major contributor to his convention. This is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous and for the conservative right to stand there and say we're going to stand with him or Ann Coulter to well, say, oh, you're just I, I another Romney bot. There is a conservative right. 
the closest is uh, uh, Ron Paul, and he's been ignored. And well, uh, Ron Paul, conservative in some ways, fiscally conservative, socially he's not. He believes in gays in the military. He believes states' rights are determining whether personhood exists as a state right. Uh, Rand Paul, however, his son, believe it or not, is much more pro-life. And Rand Paul actually sent me an email this morning asking me to sign this uh, this thing uh, that they want to get a bill for per- for the issue of a personhood challenge. That's pro-life. But when you say that the states get to decide whether abortion is legal in your state, that's not pro-life. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you deliver 20,000 babies. No, it I, means, I agree with you. It is It is. I call it a spade a spade. Dr. Deagle cuts it. I have the sword of the spirit and a very sharp tongue and a mind sharp as sharp as a razor blade. And I can tell you, I don't put up with crap from doctors or anybody who say things. Yes, well, I, his fiscal my, policies are the sir. most, are his fiscal policies, I gotta finish this, are the most conservative and the ones that need to happen. We need to balance our budget and get back from doing this. But his social policies are nuts. The same thing as legalizing drugs. We have already the whole idea of having Kemet, which is non, hallucinogenic, uh, non-hallucinogenic forms of marijuana. The idea of legalizing marijuana is nuts because the stronger forms of marijuana and an MRO cause lots of accidents. We don't want legalized drugs. What we want to do is if you're going to make them, quote, legal, what you do is you medicalize them. So everybody gets drug tested in every job and everywhere. And if you get drug tested and are positive, you're going off. Your rights are immediately suspended. You're going off to a treatment facility for drug addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, or legal drugs that your damn doctor gave you that made you a zombie. And there's lots of doctors that are giving zombieizing drugs to people, including our vets coming back. I know. I saw it firsthand. How other that system presupposes that those administering the, the test are good, fair, and honest. We can have multiple layers of crazy. Yeah, we world. can have. Yeah, yeah, I know how to construct a system of cross checks to make sure that the fair and honest would occur despite individuals trying to be sneaky. There's ways of getting around that, and I know I, I'm going to write that into my one paper. Of the problems, and and I've never been a big. If you read my blog, I, I don't particularly push legalization of marijuana, but I really do think uh, overall that it, it should be for the simple reason. That they're sending people to prison. No, no, right yeah, now, it's, it's, the America has well, I, listen, far I, but, more people in prison than any country on earth. Simple solution, including North uh, North uh, Korea. I've been saying this solution for over China. 20 years. You simply medicalize it. You basically say everybody's going to be drug tested, whether you're trying for a driver's license to maintain the certification. You can go through neuropsychological testing. For example, I can do a test that I developed years ago that will determine if you're under the influence of anything, illegal drugs, alcohol, or marijuana, or anything. It's called a nystagmogram test. And you can even install these to be actually in every vehicle. And the nystagmogram test, which is an electronic test, detects abnormal uh, what's called eye cicadence. It will shut the vehicle down and not allow it to be operated. Simple. It can be done in a minute, and it doesn't require even a drug test or a blood alcohol or anything else. If you show abnormal isocadence, cadence, you are impaired no matter what the heck it is, whether it's you're overtired, you're on drugs, alcohol, or whatever. And that can be installed in every vehicle, simple, easy sneezy. And then everybody should be drug tested, and if you're addicted to drugs, which is decaying society, causing uh, alcoholism, overuse of medical drugs or marijuana or any other drugs you're taken to a facility where you're treated and it becomes a medical problem not a legal problem or a problem where you have a, a subculture well, of criminals uh, uh, dr bell the whole problem is the people admit, the people running everything in america and largely the world do not do things because it's the right thing to do. No, no, I'll tell you why they don't do it, because, because they, it's the wrong most thing of the, to do morally, well, and, 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 this, and, and it benefits uh, them, their body. Exactly. you are right on the money, but it's even worse than that. What they're doing is they're doing this on purpose so that they can get a half, one and a half to two trillion dollars that goes into black op projects like underworld uh, cities, uh, world space programs, black op projects that are right out of the pit of hell from genetic hybridization to God knows what. And all these projects are funded by illegal drug trade from MI5 and MI6, the CIA, our military directly collaborating to make sure the drugs get neatly out of the Golden Triangle and out of Afghanistan very carefully to their end market and are laundered. And we're back with Kim Alexander. Let's go through this narrative that you want to mention on the break, Tim. 
what's going well, on with the spin masters um, about Syria, and of course all the foolishness is t- telling us that the so-called uh, Assad government would do this kind of attack on their own people, when we know yeah, it was Al Qaeda supported by that, Hillary Clinton and that. these other maniacs. I'm an analyst, and one of the things you look for is our patterns. And uh, of course, you 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 have a historical perspective of of things that have been done before. Uh, the Illuminati or the globalist uh, and their sidekicks, uh, the Neto, Yahoo Zionist, they have a history of creating na- narratives and driving people uh, the set up to the first uh, and second Gulf Wars. Uh, it, it, the whole 911 false flag event, 7 7 false flag event, etc. Et uh, they've been setting the Syrian thing up for quite some time. Uh, there's been a, a bunch of foreign mercenaries for uh, about a year and a half now have been attacking uh, Syrian forces, and that's strictly what they are. They're foreign mercenaries bought, paid, directed, armed, equipped, uh, led, and supported by. Uh, the United States, by Israel, uh, UK, France, uh, some NATO members, and the uh, Gulf Cooperative Council, the the uh, Saudi and the Kuwaiti and Omani uh, hardline Arab uh, crown dictators. Okay, now uh, they have not been very effective uh, in their attacks against Syria. The Syrian people are very tough. And by and large, they support the Assad regime. And, and uh, like I interviewed uh, a Eastern Orthodox priest that uh, actually had dinner with Assad and traveled all over the country. Uh, this was some months ago. And his view was wildly different than that uh, presented by the mainstream news media. But now we've had a, a, a really horrific event, about 108 or so people in this uh, one village were killed. Now, it's, they're claiming that the Syrian uh, army did this, but even the UN observers are disputing uh, most of what's being claimed. Uh, the people were not killed by, uh, and, and by the way, a lot of women and a lot of children. They were not killed by. Well, Gen- General Mood from uh, the uh, United Nations observing team has given him all the evidence from Assad, and he says it's very, quote, murky. That's his words. And when they actually go into specifics and dialogue with him, the evidence is they're all killed by short-arms contact, con- contact our, our with, uh, with al-Qaeda that were actually these so-called terrorist groups killing people as part of their desire to set up a, a an idea that this Assad government is completely out of control, just killing people for the sake of killing now. This is well, that's, stupid. That's, but, I mean, they, they, they try out these lies that Assad was killing peaceful demonstrators for years till it got kind of old and, and rather ridiculous. But anyway, supposedly, okay, he, his forces killed all these people. Now, that would be insanely stupid on his part to do something like that, but that's simply not the method of operation of the Syrian government. And But it is the M.O. of the people trying to create a war, a general Middle East war, and use Syria as a backdoor to attack Iran. Um, the... the, uh, yeah, the Here's a couple things that have been have come out recently. The idea of the Israeli Defense Force may have to act to stop Syrian weapon smuggling. Uh, uh, that is, the Syrians may be uh, sending uh, weapons of mass destruction to Hezbollah. Well, they've already done that. I mean, Hezbollah has a wide variety of things, but this is a narrative that's out there to prepare people. And they fly, they, they, they float false narratives or maybe narratives. Uh, another one, Obama weighs action to uh, prevent al-Qaeda grabbing Syrian weapons of mass destruction. Now, anybody with half a brain knows that al-Qaeda basically doesn't exist. It, it was a, uh, a list or an organization that was developed by the CIA and the Mossad and others. Uh, it, it, it doesn't exist. There was no al-Qaeda attack on 911, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're stupid and you want to buy into what other line that the, the liars tell you, then for all me, you know, by all means, you know, suck it up because they're, they're really dishing it out right now. 
Uh, there's also the narrative being pushed that Syria is a failed state, that the Syrians are desperate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The reality is the Syrians have kicked the butts of the foreign mercenaries quite effectively, uh, and uh, they, they have not been very effective. But they, they did pull this off. Why? Well, they're trying to get the, 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 the world ready for a NATO-based uh, intervention in Syria. If they won't and that's why Obama last week passed over. Now, you're the military expert. I want you to explain this to the public. That when he met last week, Obama gave over our NATO forces, our Aegis naval force to NATO, gave over the uh, early warning radar system in Turkey, gave over five of the most advanced Predator drones to NATO. I mean, this goes on and on and on. Literally, our military are now uh, vassals and it's subject to NATO, which is an well, arm of the United States. The United States of, the, the of 90% of our atomic throw weight. That is a, a, a just a unilaterally disassemble 90% of our, our nuclear stockpile. Well, if you do that, then that means a sneak attack by Russia or China will literally destroy us because you have to have a considerable uh, reserve uh, force. Uh, throw away because a, a sneak attack could literally take out a, a significant percentage of so, so, our nuclear throw away. So when you think and about that, this Obama reality, and you're, you're, is you're a disaster, but Obama is a front man. Uh, and, but he's a salesman. He's a salesman. Front man. But he's a salesman for the timeline. Oh, I call it Obama, the rising well, son of well, disaster. Of he he's the teleprompter reader in chief. But these people. It's the people behind them. It's the global banking cartel uh, and their Netanyahu uh, Zionist sidekicks. And I want to tell you, there's a whole lot of very powerful people in Israel very, very concerned about what Netanyahu, the direction he's taking the country, because they know that if a general Middle East war kicks off, yes, they will be able to annihilate their enemies, but it won't make any difference because their enemies will have annihilated them. That's where the term the kind of mad or mutual assured destruction comes from. We are being led down a path, and however you want to read the timeline, whether it's this summer or years from now, we are being led down a path that is designed to create a new world order, a satanic slave state based on high technology, mm. but well, and, a and, and, dramatically reduced population base. Right, but look, look at the integration of our forces. I'm just going to read this article here from CRI English News. Russia, U.S., finished joint, first ever joint anti-terror drills completed. First ever in joint anti-terrorism drills in Russia and U.S. Special troops in Colorado have ended successfully, the Russian defense minister said Thursday. This is not reported in American news, by the way. It's reported in Russian news. In yeah, quotes, you, you heard at, very, very little, if anything, on it. Right. Uh, it, it, the American it, 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 mainstream media, you know, yeah. I, I make a habit every morning to turn to MSNBC, which really gags me, Fox, which gags me, and then uh, Headline News and CNN, and then uh, and CNBC. They, they go to Russian today, and they go to overseas news. Let me well, read this I, quote I just as we're closing. That, uh, online, but I mean, I, at the, I, I watched at, because I almost had the fourth national evening newscast. Right, uh, and let me uh, read this uh, quote. Today. At the military base of Fort Carson. Very little news. It's mostly Jim, entertainment. Tim, it's mostly at, propaganda. At the military base in Fort Carson, the main exercises have conducted during the Russian U.S. anti-terrorism and drills. Welcome back and joining us we have Chris Harris, our nuclear expert. Of course, that's his radio name. He's one of the new top nuclear safety experts in America. And uh, you've got some new things to say about the science of what's going on with these fuel rods, 1,545 roughly, cooling pool number four. What's happening, uh, Chris? Okay, well, let's recap what we talked about last week, and that is, uh, um, I think it was like uh, 20, I was on Thursday last week, we discussed that uh, my concern for draining the spent fuel pool at Unit 4 is as easy as disrupting the refueling pool seal that is the only thing really holding up what's known as the refueling cavity, which is above the reactor, and you have to fill that, and then you pull the slide gate between the spent fuel pool and that cavity, and you actually connect the two bodies of water so that you can move fuel between them. And that steel, in not only in my opinion, but many others now, now that we're looking at it, is a vulnerability 
And because it really is the, uh, it's, it's the most fragile part that holds up a lot of water. If that seal <clears> goes, <throat> think of the rings of Saturn. You know, it's like a, like a flat, uh, like a flat piece of metal, you know, and it's going, it joins or it fills in the gap between the, um, between the outer ring of the, uh, reactor flange and it fills into the dry well, uh, area so that it, you can support water upon it. If that seal does crack due to any motion at all, doesn't take much motion, or like an earthquake, or due to corrosion because it's not meant to handle uh, the amount of water that it's handling for such a long time, over a year, uh, you will start draining that water down into the dry well beneath it, and there's plenty of volume there to suck up the whole the whole volume. And if that happens, you will get a, um, a draining of the spent fuel pool, which is now connected to it. They need to connect the two things together. They need to put the slide gate or the dam back in again between the two bodies of water, but they can't do that because that takes a crane, and uh, that crane is attached to the building that's no longer there. So, but why can't they use a flying crane? Well, I wish they could. I, you know, it's also kind of a precision kind of thing, putting it into a slot. But uh, so, uh, the day after we discussed that, uh, there was the mainstream article in the Wall Street Journal saying that the walls of, of Unit Four is bowing, but don't worry about it. It's not that bad. Well, I looked at the pictures that they provided in that. And it's pulling piping off the wall. The bowing is so bad. You know, if you have a pipe mounted to a yeah, wall. But, you know, I, I, I have an, a, a little bit of expertise in what's called metallurgical material science. And what you do is you do what's called X-ray crystallography or ultrasound. And if you brought in an ultrasound, they actually showed back literally the, in a few months ago, they had engineers walking with these little paper radiation suits underneath the cooling pool, literally under where they're capturing this radioactive water and recirculating with this high-speed pump back to the top. And we say, oh, no, everything looked fine. Everything looked fine. I'm thinking, these people are crazy. They're right underneath it. That metal is getting hit with neutrons, which means it's getting neutron annealing. The buckling means that they've been hit with a number of earthquakes. Top Japanese experts have said the level six quake will knock it over. That means by the middle of the summer, she's going. As they say, you know, in British Columbia or Washington State, where they're knocking down a Douglas fir that could be 180, 200 feet high, when you hear cracking sounds and you cut through part of the trunk, you get out and get out of the way because that thing jumps and it hits you. You don't get a chance to say, oops, you're dead instantly. And that problem is when this radiation goes down, nobody's going to go near TEPCO. Nobody's going to go near Fukushima Daiichi. No one's going to go within a quarter mile, half a mile of it, or you're going to die virtually almost instantly. And nothing can be done to even service the area, let alone to remediate it. So this idea that we've got a, we're going to have an economic collapse happen after Japan finally has an evacuation, which they should have done to a wider area. Then we're going to have this domino effect in Europe, and it's going to affect us in America. And the radiation cloud, by the way, is going to make our food here increasingly, besides this big burp, over the next decades, if we have that, is going to make it more and more radioactive. Yeah, and you, on Sunday, confirming this, yeah, yet another you know, so-called mainstream press picks up the 10 concerns that we, just, that we aired previously, and they discussed uh, what can happen if the wall bulges out and collapses and drains the spent fuel pool. And some of the point, one good point that they brought up in there, and I know we've talked about the fuel rods themselves being pressurized, uh, you know, at, uh, during construction or manufacture, but the pressure goes up inside due to uh, fission products like gases that, that go in there. You never want to have uh, leave the, the fuel assemblies. They talk about it heating and, I'm sorry, say like popping the cork on a champagne bottle. It, it can do that and blow the end caps off of these if they over. So you don't even need a fire. I mean, you don't, you don't even need that the, the pyrophoric fire. You just need these things to pop their uh, their end caps off. And uh, remember, we talked about what what the water does versus cooling in the spent fuel pool. Second of all, it's shielding. I mean, it's, it, you need that, or you can't even get near Unit 1 if, if there's no water in there. That's how bad the shine would be in, in certain areas. Yeah, the shine, then, basically, the amounts of gamma rays coming in there, the amounts of neutrons. And by the way, neutrons will kill you quicker than gamma rays, won't they? Oh, yeah, neutrons are little bullets. You're right. That's, that's exactly what they are. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah they're, they're, they're like being hit with a cosmic ray. They don't just kind of fizz your DNA. They shatter it. They're deeply penetrating, yeah. and uh, and uh, there's really there's there's no simple way to, to stop neutron shielding is is tough. Yeah, and, very uh, very difficult to do neutron shielding. Um, just want to read an article in the meantime to kind of just to focus on so people can grasp just how much consequences. This one here is published. It's called Fukushima Washington hides black swan of economic collapse. 
As the sovereign debt crisis in Europe dominates media coverage of both financial and mainstream news, Washington deliberates over a far more serious threat to the global economy starting from the continuing crisis at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant. It is now seeping out that more rapidly from sources outside the captured and complicit mainstream news outlets. In quotes, you can't stop the truth from leaking out about Fukushima, and President Obama actually came out with a statement at the start of this disaster and said that their nuclear experts did not feel that harmful effects of radiation would reach our shores. That was nuked radio, Christina Consolo, uh, and uh, the true, true news. Due to increasing reports of nuclear contamination found in pollen across the U.S. West Coast, comma, babies with elevated Becquerel levels of nearly 10 times normal, presumably from mother's milk, and a statistically unusual number of children with flu-like symptoms who won't respond to conventional medical protocol, the truth about Fukushima could easily break out into a national panic, significant enough to trigger an economic collapse of the U.S. economy and dollar, according to Consolo. That's yeah, what we I, found. I, I published that article, by the way, on my blog today, and, and right. at the, it, it, there were some really good points there. Yeah, and Consolo, by the way, was attacked by... Uh, by uh, um, some of the uh, the bloggers around, you know, like uh, I don't even I don't even know if I want to mention this name anymore. I'm just getting so upset by making people that kind of dismiss this and think that it's not important. That's what we found from Freedom of Information Act requests, transmissions from the U.S. government, the Chinese and Russians and Japanese from the beginning of the disaster until now. That includes NRC Nuclear Regulatory Commission transcript of phone calls. Consolo explained, in quotes. They were well aware of the high levels were, uh, were and that they were coming over here. And, of course, we have 100% of the tuna. This is only four months after the March 11th. By the way, the amount of radio iodine and radioactive cesium in the nori, nori uh, seaweed in southern Japan, 1,200 miles away, in the opposite current that's not flowing, the, it literally is on the other side of the world because that current always flows away from that area, has more than tripled or quadrupled since last March. It's not going down, it's increasing, and it's not even in the direction where the radiation's going. Most of that radiation's going in our direction. 80% of that radiation plus is going in our direction, and our government, our, our preening, bisexual, Sunni Muslim, Satanist, high-level Mason fool in the White House, the usurper-in-chief, is doing nothing other than preening and getting ready to get reelected. That's how ridiculous this is. Well, Dr. Bell I, and Chris, I maintain that the three-ton flaming pink elephant in the living room is, is the question, why, after 13 or more months of uh, this disaster, why basically has nothing really been done to stabilize well, well, here, here's, an, here's another quote from Consolo. So I want you to answer this one, Chris. She says, in quotes, they were well aware of high levels that were and that were coming over here, she added. In fact, the infants in California were exposed to 40,000 becquerels, means the human body has 4,400 becquerels on average from decayed potassium or iodine 131 that causes thyroid cancer from March 17th to the beginning of April. That's only a short period. This is bioaccumulating. Bioaccumulating. So if you don't get our radiation protocol, if you don't drink clean filtered water, you're slowly taking literally these radioactive fleas of death into your body and it's degrading your energy level your immune system your mitochondria it's speeding every disease known to man and it's going to hasten worldwide pandemic as well welcome back and uh, chris uh, some uh, Analysis, what do you think of, of this? Now, as a nuclear expert, um, I'm scratching my head. I know after Fukushima, we had a huge response. We still get people, you know, ordering uh, our radiation kit. I can't tell you how important this is. I've been receiving scientific, technical, military sources, now internal documents, all kinds of things, telling me there's going to be disaster by the middle of the summer. We're going to have a catastrophe with a massive burp of radiation. This article by Consolo, which I think is probably pretty rational, says that the, her theory is that the National Defense Authorization Act that was passed in January and the, uh, and the other national act, the National Defense Resources Preparation Act, Preparedness Act, that was pushed, pushed through by Obama in March, that these are, quote, preparations for a disaster of, of biblical proportions of a radiation cloud striking America and a collapse in the world economy. Because if Japan goes down, you're not just going to evacuate Tokyo. You're going to have radioactive wheat and corn in America, and you're going to have a food catastrophe of biblical proportions. 
and that'll happen relatively immediately. That's why I tell people, if you don't get emergency dehydrated food for a period of at least six months, I can't say God help you, because he's already told me to tell you you better do it or else. And be prepared to have water in your home. And don't be an enemy combatant, because if you go out in the streets, and we have foreign or American troops on the, on the streets controlling the traffic and everything because it's panic city, if you're out there, you are, quote, by definition, with all of these things that have been passed with Patriot Act 1 and 2, you are an enemy combatant. You might be an American citizen. You might have lived here for generations since the nation was founded. You might have arrived in your ancestors of Plymouth Rock. You are an enemy combatant when they go to these, activate to this level of disaster. And people don't get it. Chris, what do you think is likely to happen this summer or this fall? I mean, because it's coming, isn't it? It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if. It's just when does it happen? Chris, are you there? Uh, must not be here. I'm here right now. Sorry. Uh, if if, uh, if the bulge in that in that building, the photos of the bulge in Unit Four, are any indication, uh, you're going to start seeing. I, I I think that seal is going to drain the that spent fuel pool. And if that happens, the, it, it's a it's a matter of minutes to hours. It's, it's it's not it's not weeks or months, is it? It's minutes no, to hours with a high speed pump before yeah. that thing gets. And what you mentioned before in the break is that these fuel rod assemblies will get so hot they'll just pop. They'll have a mass release, even if there's not a zirconite fire. Then once the reactor actually falls over, all that reactor fuel, 1,545 fuel rods, along with all the other mess there on that site, is going to end up hitting the groundwater table, and that giant corium will hit criticality, and we'll not only have hydrogen explosions generated by the zirconite striking the water to create hydrogen, but we'll also have nuclear explosions and a giant dirty bomb, the biggest dirty bombs in history, not just one, but multiple explosions that are irregularly spaced in time and space and size, they'll be pushing giant amounts of radiation bursts as well as a slow burn pumping radiation through steam tubes literally kilometers away under the ocean or through steam jets that can reach kilometers away from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. As far away as we know the Tokyo tunnel systems where they take the radiation detectors in these high-speed uh, trains in Japan and the radiation detectors are going off the scale because those steam jets are going all the way to northern Tokyo from Fukushima. People don't understand that. They are going to find their way kilometers away to those underground tunnels in Japan, in Tokyo. And when this, when this finally blows, as they say, they're going to have to evacuate Tokyo, the largest metropolitan area on Earth of any civilized population. And the third largest, and it's only here behind China, economy will crash. And when that happens, Europe crashing we will have a bank holiday in America, and I believe it's coming by the fall. I think we're going to see Obama elected under the cover of a squeaker election with a catastrophe economically and environmentally happening, starting with the economic catastrophe this summer or late summer and um, the economic catastrophe. And, of course, they'll have an answer for it. They'll have a solution. They'll tell us to just go back and put smiley faces on. We won't be radioactive. They'll tell us that the G20 will put together a world currency. We don't need to worry. They'll invent a new f system. Only side effect is it'll be a biometric world currency system tied in with the Obamacare health plan with a biometric implantable chip, which is, uh, by the way, we Christians know, is called the mark of the beast. And people say that's a conspiracy theory. You know what? You need a reality check. When we know something that's a prophecy 2,000 years ago given by Jesus Christ himself, and it turns out to be true, you need to start reevaluating whether or not being an agnostic or an atheist is just a form of arrogance or is just plain what I call global omnicidic stupidity where you believe in omnicide you want us to believe to the point of your own self arrogance to kill the rest of the population of humanity because you don't believe that a prophetic warning really means anything for the creator yeah. well, they've wanted uh, a biometric identity for a long time so that oh this will be the perfect excuse won't it perfect excuse yeah. and that's why they have all these things uh, and of course these reactors are constantly steaming they're dumping nine tons of water on each reactor and spent fuel all day long. They're dumping out five to ten tons every day into the oceans. And, of course, these giant storms also hit these areas. Uh, this radiation slick off the coast of Japan is hitting us now. We have, you know, radioactive, you know, bluefin tuna, radioactive kelp off of Orange County, radioactive 
pine needles in Washington and Oregon State. People don't understand it. When we're quoting these numbers of Becquerel's, they quoted from the mortality and morbidity reports just in the first three months that 20,000 children in neonatal intensive care units died in excess in America as far away as Pennsylvania, where the largest single neonatal intensive care unit was, killed by Fukushima. Do people grasp that? And this is, by the way, not me. I'm quoting scientists that review the reports and say, oh, my gosh, we got this big bump in mortality. What happened? Oh, okay. Fukushima. And these children had no enzymatic protection against radioactive isotopes, literally affecting them 10,000 miles away from Fukushima on the east coast of the United States. Is that crazy or what? Well, well Dr. Bill, you know the, the recent article that made headlines was the radioactive tuna. It just came out last week. Except. The, yeah, and of course they hit it. They hit it since last year. How much more radioactive is it? And how much more data has the military and our government got, but they're not going to tell us? And maybe the Consolo's theory is correct. This is really disturbing. Yeah, yeah and Jim, I, 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 Tim, I want you to tell us about this because if her theory is correct that the National Defense Authorization Act and this other horror act that was put in and the, the basically the, the act where they can take away your, your citizenship, the, you know, this National Regulatory Commission that talks about all this stuff and the, the National Defense Resources Preparedness Act. It's, well, they it's really correct. do that. They they pass a law saying they can do that, but the law doesn't trump the Constitution. Well, they, what about the baseball cards? They had some some lying horrors in uh, the Supreme Court or someplace else. That I, I look the Constitution. I look at my New York Times today. I was looking at it because I had my Kindle, and I looked at a picture and it shows Obama pooling over and looking there with his long, they call Mac Daddy long legs, sitting there with his white socks showing, looking at baseball cards, which are the people he wants to kill, and he puts out an authorization to hit him with a predator drone, well, and all their relatives. Well, I said on my site when I, I, I carried that story yesterday, uh, for a Satanist, that would be uh, uh, something very enjoyable. And it, it's come out more today that, that he really gets into uh, selecting oh, yeah. who gets to be killed. He doesn't, uh, he, he's notorious for spending very little time as president. Uh, but, but that particular job, uh, part of the, the, his job as president, he seems to relish. And uh, the problem, and that goes back to uh, uh, Clinton and Mrs. Clinton and all these, and George Bush and Bush Jr. and all these characters, is the powers that be, the hidden powers that uh, manipulate things, purposely select uh, sexual deviance and uh, really immoral, uh, satanic, luciferian, worshiping, sick, uh, narcissistic well, well, uh, jerks yeah. you know what, are so-called leaders. Uh, Tim, sometimes you have what I call malapropisms, which you may somehow say a word that's different, but I think this time you were actually more correct than anybody who pronounces it correctly. Loser fairians. Yeah. They're losers and they're fairies. Loser fairians. So I think we, we have to realize that Obama is a loser fairian. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I think Romney is too. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. We, we. He's got some magic underwear. It's more magic than you realize. <laughs> Uh, it's sad, but... Yeah. Uh, let let, let me know. read this closing article on the bluefin tuna. Does radioactive tuna mean Fukushima was worse than expected? The findings demonstrate that nuclear accident last March had a pervasive and enduring impact on the world's interconnected oceans. And by the way, it's now one year and three months since this disaster happened, and now we have about another 15 months, and that radiation will circulate every single ocean on Earth. And I saw... Yeah. The angel pour out wormwood, Chernobyl, on the oceans, and they were made bitter, and one-third of the creatures in the oceans died. Does that sound familiar? It certainly does. Yeah. If you don't think we're in the end times, you're a fool, and you're going to die. Not just a physical death, but your spiritual death has already started unless you repent. Yeah, if right. you attack yeah. those who are the messenger rather than repenting before your Most High God, and you're not prepared physically, emotionally, financially for a devaluation or a bank holiday or radiation cloud, I can't say God help you. 